Squirrel cage motors are the most commonly used type of three-phase induction motors and those motor has got their name from the appearance of rotors. Being rugged and requiring neither a separate DC power source nor slip rings. They are essentially constant speed devices when energized by a constant frequency AC supply, however electronic speed control is available. Over 90% of all motors are AC three-phase induction motors in the world. The three-phase AC induction motor is a rotating electric machine that is designed to operate on a three-phase supply. This three-phase motor is also called as an asynchronous motor. These AC motors are of two types, squirrel and slip ring type induction motors. The principle of operation of this motor is based on the production of a rotating magnetic field. An induction motor or asynchronous motor is an AC electric motor in which the electric current in the rotor needed to produce torque is obtained by electromagnetic induction from the magnetic field of the stator winding. An induction motor can therefore be made without electrical connections to the rotor. An induction motor's rotor can be either wound type or squirrel cage type. Three-phase squirrel cage induction motors are widely used as industrial drives because they are self-starting, reliable and economical. Single-phase induction motors are used extensively for smaller loads, such as household appliances like fans. Although traditionally used in fixed speed service, induction motors are increasingly being used with variable frequency drives VFD in variable speed service. VFDs offer especially important en energy savings opportunities for existing and prospective induction motors in variable torque centrifugal fan, pump and compressor load applications. Squirrel cage induction motors are very widely used in both fixed speed and variable frequency drive applications. Operation of induction motors, when three-phase induction motors starter winding is energized from a three-phase supply, a rotating magnetic field is set up which rotates round die stator at some type of speed. The rotating field passes through my air gap and cuts me rotor conductors, which as yet, are stationary. Due to the relative speed between the rotating flux and the stationary rotor, electromagnetic force is induced in the rotor conductors. Since the rotor circuit is short-circuited, currents start flowing in die rotor conductors. The current carrying rotor conductors are placed magnetic field produced by die stator. Consequently, a mechanical force acts on the rotor conductors. The sum of dying mechanical forces on all the rotor conductors produces a torque, which tends to move the rotor in the same direction as the rotating field. The direction of rotor current will be such that they tend to oppose the cause of producing them. Now, the cause producing the rotor currents is the relative speed between the motor rota rotating field and the stationary conductors. Hence to reduce this relative speed, the rotor starts running in the same direction as that of the stator field and tries to catch it. Applications of three-phase induction motors, air conditioners, washers, dryers, industrial machinery, fans, blowers etc. Construction of three-phase induction motors, a three-phase induction motor has a stator and rotor. The stator carries a three-phase winding or stator winding and rotor carries a short-circuited winding or rotor winding. The rotor and stator is separated from a small air gap. These three-phase motors consist of a stator and a rotor and between which no electrical connection exists. These stator and rotors are constructed with the use of high magnetic core materials in order to reduce hysteresis and any current losses. Stator frame can be constructed using cast iron, aluminum, or rolled steel. The stator frame provides necessary mechanical protection and support for stator laminated core, windings, and other arrangements for ventilation. The stator is wounded with three-phase windings which are overlapped with one another at a 120-degree phase shift fitted into slotted laminations. The six ends of the three windings are brought out and connected to the terminal box so that these windings are excited by three-phase main supply. These windings are of copper wire insulated with varnish fitted into insulated slotted laminations. At all working temperatures, this impregnated varnish remains rigid. These windings have high insulation resistance and high resistance to the saline atmosphere, moisture, alkaline fumes, oil, and grease, etc. Whichever suits the voltage level, these windings are connected in either star or de delta connections. The rotor of the three-phase AC induction motor is different for the slip ring and squirrel cage induction motors. The rotor in the slip ring type consists of heavy aluminum or copper bars shorted on both ends of the cylindrical rotor. The shaft of the induction motor is supported on two bearings at each ends to ensure free rotating within the stator and to reduce the friction. It consists of a stack of steel laminations evenly spaced slots that are punched around of its circumference into which uninsulated heavy aluminum or copper bars are placed. A slip ring type rotor consists of three phase windings that are internally start at one end, and the other ends are brought outside and connected to the slip rings mounted on the rotor shaft. Shaft. And for developing a high starting torque these windings are connected to rheostat with the help of carbon brushes. This external resistor or rheostat is used at the starting period only. Once the motor attains the normal speed, the brushes are short-circuited, and the wound rotor works as a squirrel cage rotor. Stator of induction motor, the stator consists of a steel frame, which encloses a hollow, cylindrical core made up of thin lamination of silicon steel to reduce hysteresis and any current loss. A number of even space slots are provided on the inner periphery of my lamination. 
The insulated conductors are placed in the stator slots. It is mounted on the shaft, is a laminated core having slotted its outer periphery. There are two main types of rotors available in the induction motor. Squirrel cage rotor, wound rotor, squirrel cage rotor three-phase induction motors. It consists of a laminated cylindrical core having parallel slots on its outer periphery. One copper or aluminum bar is placed in each slot. All these bars are joined at each end by metal rings called end rings. Those induction motors that employ squirrel cage rotors are called squirrel cage induction motors. It suffers from the disadvantages of a low starting torque. Wound rotor, it consists of a laminated cylindrical core and carries a three-phase winding, similar to the one on the motor stator. The rotor winding is uniformly distributed in the slots and is usually star connected. There are some resistances which are gradually reduced to zero as the motor runs up to speed. The external resistances are used during the starting period only. Principle of operation of three-phase induction motor, when the motor is excited with a three-phase supply, three-phase stator winding produces a rotating magnetic field with 120 displacements at a constant magnitude which rotates at synchronous speed. This changing magnetic field cuts the rotor conductors and induces a current in them according to the principle of Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. As these rotor conductors are shorted, the current starts to flow through these conductors. In the presence of the magnetic field of the stator, rotor conductors are placed, and therefore, according to the Lorentz force principle, a mechanical force acts on the rotor conductor. Thus, all the rotor conductor's force, i.e., the sum of the mechanical forces produces torque in the rotor which tends to move it in the same direction of the rotating magnetic field. This rotor conductor's rotation can also be explained by Lenz's law which tells that the induced currents in the rotor oppose the cause for its production, here this opposition is rotating magnetic field. This result the rotor starts rotating in the same direction of the stator rotating magnetic field. If the rotor speed more than the stator speed, then no current will induce in the rotor because the reason for rotor rotation is the relative speed of the rotor in stator magnetic fields. This stator and the rotor field difference are called slip. This how a three-phase motor is called an asynchronous machine due to this relative speed difference between the stator and the rotors. As we discussed above, the relative speed between the stator field and the rotor conductors causes to rotate the rotor in a particular direction. Hence, for producing the rotation, the rotor speed nr must always be less than the stator field speed ns, and the difference between these two parameters depends on the load on the motor. Let's discuss history. In 1824, the French physicist François Arago formulated the existence of rotating magnetic fields, termed Arago's rotations. By manually turning switches on and off, Walter Bailey demonstrated this in 1879, effectively the first primitive induction motor. The first commutator-free single-phase AC induction motor was invented by Hungarian engineer he used the single-phase motor to propel his invention, the electricity meter. The first AC commutator-free three-phase induction motors were independently invented by Galileo Ferraris and Nikola Tesla, a working motor model having been demonstrated by the former in 1885 and by the latter in 1887. Tesla applied for U.S. patents in October and November 1887 and was granted some of these patents in May 1888. In April 1888, the Royal Academy of Science of Turin published Ferraris's research on his AC polyphase motor detailing the foundations of motor operation. In May 1888 Tesla presented the technical paper A New System for Alternating Current Motors and Transformers to the American Institute of Electrical Engineers AIE describing three, for stator pole motor types, one having a four-pole rotor forming a non-self-starting reluctance motor, another with a wound rotor forming a self-starting induction motor, and the third a true synchronous motor with a separately excited DC supply to the rotor winding. George Westinghouse, who was developing an alternating current power system at that time, licensed Tesla's patents in 1888 and purchased a U.S. patent option on Ferrari's induction motor concept. Tesla was also employed for one year as a consultant. Westinghouse employee C. F. Scott was assigned to assist Tesla and later took over development of the induction motor at Westinghouse. Steadfast in his promotion of three-phase development, Mikhail Delivo Dobrovolsky invented the cage rotor induction motor in 1889 and the three-limb transformer in 1890. Power factor, the power factor of induction motors varies with load, typically from around 0.85 or 0.90 at full load to as low as about 0.20 at no load, due to stator and rotor leakage and magnetizing reactances. Power factor can be improved by connecting capacitors either on an individual motor basis or, by preference, on a common bus covering several motors. For economic and other considerations, power systems are rarely power factor corrected to unity power factor. Power capacitor application with harmonic currents requires power system an analysis to avoid harmonic resonance between capacitors and transformer and circuit reactances. Common bus power factor correction is recommended to minimize resonant risk and to simplify power system analysis. Efficiency full load motor efficiency is around 85 to 97%, related motor losses being broken down roughly as follows, 
Friction and windage, 5 to 15 percent, iron or core losses, 15 to 25 percent, stator losses, 25 to 40 percent, rotor losses, 15 to 25 percent, stray load losses, 10 to 20 percent. Various regulatory authorities in many countries have introduced and implemented legislation to encourage the manufacture and use of higher efficiency electric motors. There is existing and forthcoming legislation regarding the future mandatory use of premium efficiency induction type motors in defined equipment. Faraday's Law of Induction Motor Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction is a significant decision that figures out the fundamental movement of a three-phase induction motor. It was sorted out by Michael Faraday and portrays the association between a changing magnetic field and the prompted electromotive force EMF. The basic idea of Faraday's regulation is summarized as follows. Exactly when the attractive field around a conductor changes, it induces an electromotive power EMF in the conductor. The size of the induced EMF corresponds comparatively with the speed of progress of magnetic flux through the conductor. Rotating magnetic field, in a three-phase induction motor, three arrangements of windings are set 120 degrees separated in space. At the point when a three-phase AC voltage is applied to these windings, it delivers a rotating magnetic field. Interaction with rotor conductors, the rotating magnetic field induces an EMF in the rotor conductors because of Faraday's law. As the magnetic field rotates, it cuts across the rotor conductors, causing an adjustment of attractive motion. Generation of current in rotor, the induced EMF in the rotor conductors causes the progression of current in the rotor. This current in the rotor conductors connects with the magnetic field, creating a torque that makes the rotor turn. Rotor movement and synchronization, the rotor begins to follow the rotating magnetic field, endeavoring to find its rotational speed. The asynchronous development slip between the rotor and the turning magnetic field permits the motor to ceaselessly create torque and rotate. Let's discuss advantages, variable speed control, one of the main advantages of slip ring motors is the ability to control the speed and power by moving the external block related with the rotor windings. Because of this, they are suitable for applications that require variable speed. High starting torque control, slip ring motors can give high starting torque, and the external devices can be changed as per control the starting torque. Smooth acceleration, the ability to control the rotor resistance results in less mechanical pressure during starting and a smoother speed increase. Disadvantages, complex construction, slip ring motors have a more marvelous improvement as a result of the external securities and slip rings, inciting higher gathering and backing costs. Higher maintenance, the slip rings and brushes in the rotor require high maintenance, and the external devices are required. Lower efficiency, due to the complexity of the rotor development and the additional losses in the external protections, slip ring motors typically have lower performance than squirrel confined motors. Applications of three-phase induction motor, wastewater treatment plants, pumps and other hardware in wastewater treatment plants frequently depend on three-phase induction motors for their operation. These motors can deal with the constant and variable loads related with wastewater treatment. Oil and gas industry, induction motors are utilized in different cycles inside the oil and gas industry, including driving siphons, blowers, and boring equipment. Electric traction, various electric trains, cable cars, and electric vehicles utilize three-phase induction motor for drive. These motors give a decent overall influence and effectiveness for transportation applications. Air conditioning and HVAC systems, induction motors power the fans and blowers in cooling and warming, ventilation, and cooling air conditioning system. Their effectiveness and capacity to deal with differing loads make them ideal for these applications. Water pumping stations, induction motors are generally utilized in water siphoning stations for providing water to urban communities and horticultural regions. Their dependability and capacity to work under changing burden conditions make them appropriate for water pumping applications. Mining operations, in mining, three-phase induction motors power rollers, transports, and other equipment. Their hardy plan and capacity to work in testing conditions make them appropriate for mining applications. Manufacturing plants, induction motors are used in an extensive variety of assembling processes, including material taking care of, bundling, and sequential construction systems. Their unwavering quality and capacity to deal with weighty burdens add to their ubiquity in assembling. Industrial machinery, three-phase induction motor are broadly utilized in modern apparatus like pumps, fans, blowers, transports, and machine devices. Their capacity to give high power yield and solid activity makes them reasonable for driving these types of equipment. Types of induction motor enclosures, induction motors are used in a wide variety of operating environments, and manufacturers provide several different styles to accommodate them. Some of the more common are described next. Totally enclosed motors allow no deliberate exchange of air between the inside and outside of the motor. There are three common types of totally enclosed motors. Totally enclosed, fan cool TEFC The TEFC motor has an external fan mounted on the motor shaft that pulls air over the case to aid cooling. Totally enclosed, non-ventilated TNV, the TNV motor is similar to the TEFC except it does not have an external fan. Because the only cooling is by radiation from the case, this machine will run hotter than the TEFC. 
Thus, the motor must be designed for a higher operating temperature, or it may be built on a larger frame than the TEFC to provide a larger cooling surface. Totally enclosed, air over TAO, the TAO motor is designed to operate a fan or blower. Like the TENV, it does not have its own fan on the shaft. However, it is designed to be mounted in the airstream created by the fan or blower that it is driving either directly or by a belt. Open frame motors contain ventilated openings to allow air to pass through the inside of the motor for cooling. 